Welcome back to the program. Pleasure to be with you and uh, glad to welcome to the program on the phone with me right now, uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan. Uh, Speaker Ryan, it's good to have you hey. on the program. How you doing, Lars? Well, I'd be doing better, I guess. I, I'm frustrated with what the Congress Tell me about it. Who is it? First, I want to tell you congratulations for passing a bill for the very first time that would repeal Obamacare. It now goes to the president, I guess, as of about an hour ago. It's headed that direction. But is there any uncertainty that he's going to veto it? So let me correct you. It's not the first time we've passed a bill to repeal Obamacare. We've passed several. This is the first time we're, we found a way to get around the filibuster to get it on his desk. And so, of course not. Do I think the guy named Obama is going to sign the bill uh, defunding Obamacare? Also, by the way, defunding Planned Parenthood. No, I do not. But this is an important win for us. The reason it's an important win for us, we've been frustrated by this filibuster for years. We use the one tool we've got. It's one bill we can use once a year called reconciliation to put these priorities of ours, defunding Planned Parenthood and Obamacare, and getting it to his desk without 60 votes, meaning getting around a filibuster. What's the lesson in this? This means if we get a Republican president, we will have demonstrated and proven already that without 60 votes with a 51 vote threshold, we can get these bills on a president's desk. And if we have a good president, we can get them signed into law. Why didn't this happen a year ago? We didn't have a Senate. Well, but there's no way to put pressure on the other members of Congress and push them through. We got 52 votes uh, to 54 Republicans. Two Republicans uh, voted no. Um, You need 51 to pass it. Uh, So we did it as soon as we got our 51 votes. And this is the Senate. The House, we've passed a number of repeal bills. So that's passing these bills in the House has never been the question. We've already passed them. Getting them through the Senate has always been the issue. And we finally cracked the code. By the way, you need the Senate majority. We didn't have the Senate majority until this session of Congress. Right. Now that we had the Senate majority, the Senate finally passed a budget, which gave us this reconciliation tool. So in 2015, the 2014 election gave us the Senate. In 2015, we passed a budget in the House that balanced the budget and paid off the debt and repealed Obamacare. The Senate did the same thing. We conferenced those two budgets, passed that budget that gave us reconciliation, and this is what we're using. So this is the first year we've had a Republican Senate. And in this first year that we've had this Republican Senate along with the Republican House, we have now been able to put this bill on his desk. He will veto it, no two ways about it. But we contrast, we show who we are, who he is. But we also show, look what we can do if we get a Republican president. So then once he repeals it, what, what happens next? He vetoes it. Once he vetoes sorry, it. Sorry, vetoes it. Once he vetoes it, sends it back to you, then what? We're going to have a veto override vote. Now, obviously, it takes two-thirds vote to vote. And you're not going to get that, are We're you? not going to have that. But we think it's important to do this. We think it's important to stand up and, and fight for what we believe in. And, and follow the Constitution all the way through to the end. But also we think it's important not just to draw the contrast, not just to show that you shouldn't be, you know, in Planned Parenthood's case, you shouldn't be funding such a, such a horrendous organization. Put the money in public health centers, which are better for women's health care in the first place, without engaging in, in such a moral conundrum like what they do with baby body parts and uh, getting rid of Obamacare. What we're showing is we in this majority in the House and the Senate had the power to get these things to the president's desk. And if only we had a Republican president, look what we could do. But didn't you give up a lot of your leverage last fall before Christmas when when you passed, effectively funded what the president wanted? So that was discretionary spending. This is mandatory. That's where everybody gets kind of confused about this. Um, What the omnibus appropriation, which you know as well as anybody else that I hate omnibuses. This is the, 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 the situation I inherited. And what happened was the appropriations process shut down in July. No appropriation bill passed. That was what broke the appropriations process. That's discretionary spending, 40% of government spending. 60% of government spending is what we call entitlements. They're on autopilot. Obamacare yep. is an entitlement. It's on autopilot. So Obamacare, all those things, most of Planned Parenthood, that's, that's Medicaid. That's on autopilot. That's not in this spending category, which is discretionary spending. More than half of discretionary spending is the military. So the omnibus, more than half of that money was what exactly what we wanted for the military – going to the military to defeat ISIS, building up our military, getting the military what we wanted. Then we went and fought for other things. We maintained all our pro-life riders. We dropped the funding of the Environmental Protection Agency to a level we haven't seen since pre-Obama. 
We put new limits on the Internal Revenue Service so that they cannot meddle in elections like they did when they went after conservative groups. We lifted the 40-year ban on oil exports. We put a lot of different uh, – we, we got after IPAB. We stopped the insurance bailouts in military. So we did a lot of good things that we wanted, including getting a tax bill to make a lot of tax provisions permanent for small businesses, for families, which helps us get to tax reform in 2017. So we got good wins, and the wins we didn't get are the ones we're following up with right now, which are going after things that are entitlements like Obamacare, Planned Parenthood. Let me ask you about something else that's going on right now. A couple of hundred miles from where I'm standing, a militia group has taken over part of a federal wildlife refuge. Sure, I've spent and, the morning with Greg Walden. I'm familiar with it. And, and I talked to Congressman Walden, too, today. I disagree with their method, but I entirely agree. Why does the federal government own all this land? And when is the federal government going to give this land back to either the people or the states? That's a good and fitting question. We have far too much land, and not only that, we have an arrogant federal government that's harassing landowners, especially ranchers in the West. And, and the thing about this story, which I agree with you, I don't condone um, the tactics being deployed, but people in the East, in the Midwest, don't quite appreciate and understand just how much land is owned by the federal government and how much the federal government harasses people. So of all the things, and Greg Walden, i got to tell you, he, was, he had the national media right in front of him this morning, and just use that moment to educate people about just the harassment of the federal government on landowners. The, the question is, can we come up with laws to dispose of federal property, to, to sell federal property, and, and cut back on, say, whether it's monuments or land grabs? The answer is yes. And our budgets that we've been passing have always carried these. Guess what you need? You need a president to sign these budgets into law. Well, how about putting that bill on President Obama's desk and then say, go ahead, veto it, tell America that the federal government is still going to be the largest landowner in the western United States? Well, just again, for the point I just went through before, we have one crack at getting around a filibuster, and we used it this year uh, for, for Planned Parenthood uh, re- the funding and for Obamacare. All right. Yesterday, the president rolled out 10 different changes he wants to make. I think some of them are legitimately unconstitutional, like his suggesting if you're on the no-fly list, members of Congress. Yes. That, that these are wrong. Is, there, right. is the Congress going to be able to do anything to stop well, the president? Obviously, we're starting our hearings up. We're going to do oversight on this. I assume a number of these will end up in court. Um, and I think you're exactly right. The no-fly list, by the way, is no due process on the no-fly list. Right. So that's just a complete non-starter, and we think, we think that, that, that our side of the view will prevail in court on that one. Um, but the other thing is, look, uh, this is a president striving for relevancy in a presidential election year that where he's not on the ballot, working so hard to distract Americans. He's going to try and distract Americans, so we're talking about guns and not talking about his failures in ISIS not talking about his failures in going after keeping us safe, not talking about his failures on national security. And he wants to knock us off our game and putting out a a bold conservative alternative for the country. So we have to understand his distractions for what they are. In some of these cases, he's just restating law. I mean, so I think what he's just basically trying to do is start a distraction issue. And we're going to have a distraction next week, then we're going to have another distraction the week after that. I think that's going to be the Obama playbook all year long. And so what we're going to do is look at every option we have to see how we make sure that we maintain our Second Amendment rights. Last look, I don't know what you're wearing on your hip right now. Maybe it's a Kimber. Last time I saw it's you, you had that. It's a Kimber. You got a, it's I wouldn't be allowed guns. to carry it where you are uh, because D.C., of course, is unfriendly. Right. Last quick question. Does that mean for the next year where if, if Congress will effectively get nothing done with the president still there? Well, not, look, what do we want to get done? We want to balance the budget. We want to reduce taxes. We want to preserve life. We want to repeal Obamacare. So we're going to get done our agenda that we believe in with this president? No, but can we, can we highlight a contrast? Can we take an agenda to the country and say this is the choice? Here is an alternative Speaker to Ryan. the path we are on. Speaker Ryan, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. You bet.